Welcome, Chargeback Army, to Chargeback Forward. As always, we have Terrence and we have Mike, and today we will be discussing an excellent game that came out, oh man, like I said, almost 30 years ago. All the way back in 1989, we are here to talk about The Revenge of Shinobi. So, this came out very, not, like, it wasn't like a launch title for the Genesis, but I believe like... Launch like, window? Launch window, which is always like a few months after the system came out. And so at the time, we were still used to playing, I guess the best ninja game we had played at the time was probably Ninja Gaiden on the NES. Yeah, or, or the arcade. Or the arcade, yeah, so there wasn't anything really to compare it to in terms of what we were about to see. Now, we had played the original Shinobi in the arcade around the Master System, which are, is an excellent game in its own right, but here's a game that was never out in the arcade. It was strictly meant for the home market, and this was to really, you know, Sega wanted to turn some heads. Nintendo was basically ruling the world at the time, they were kicking everyone's ass, and Sega said we needed something completely different. And one thing that surprised mm -hmm. me though, is when this game came out, it was a very awkward period, and yes they did, like the awkward period is the transitioning from the Master System uh, and introducing the Genesis yep. Mega Drive and like that hardware. I wanted like nothing else, Mike, for Shinobi to come out on the Sega Genesis. And I'm not going to lie to you, I was a little disappointed that when I heard that there was a Shinobi game coming out on the Genesis that it wasn't the arcade Shinobi. But I gave it a shot because I loved the first game <laughs> so much. Wow, was I surprised, man. What a, what a pleasant surprise, what a, what a great game. And especially being able to play it right when it came out and having the opportunity to play it on, for example, a first-run cartridge, <laughs> where in this instance, there were huge disparities, well not huge, but very significantly visual, significant visual disparities between different iterations of the Revenge of Shinobi. Mike, uh, what was your experience with that? So, when I originally played it, it was at a, uh, believe it or not, it was at a Compu Center. Sure enough, right enough. Store, maybe not, unless you're Canadian, I believe, I don't know if you know, I don't know if they're ever in the U.S. I got my Genesis from a Compu Center. <laughs> there you go. But they used to have, you go to the front counter and they'd have CRTs, all set up with the controller and you could just, you know, have, there was Genesis and TurboGrafx-16 and NES hooked up. And so that's where I first originally played Revenge of Shinobi when it first came out, because that's where they'd always put the new games. Um, but later on in the game, they used, uh, let's put it this way, Sega was a bit loose with um, some copyrights. <laughs> and there to was, say the least. There were certain characters and bosses, uh, and I... Full stop. Yes. Full stop. Sega? Sega? curated and procured certain elements from other entertainment sources to put in their video games? Yes, that, that's a, that's the, the proper way. Of it. This this is this has happened? Yes, they uh hmm. <laughs> no, they're they're yeah. literally notorious for doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Check out our Golden Axe video. Now, uh, I'm not even sure I'm not even sure at this point if that was the Golden Axe soundtrack video or the Golden Axe right. game video, but one of them we went on about David Caruso and his infamous screen. There you go. So, so Sega was very notorious for this. So in, I'm sure you've seen guys have seen it before now in the uh, Revenge of Shinobi, there were certain bosses. Uh, depending on what cartridge you owned or played at the time, there was like Spider-Man was a boss, uh, Batman was a boss, uh, Godzilla, the Terminator, Rambo, I believe even was in there. <laughs> Rambo was in there. So well. they've changed constantly throughout the years. Um, I at home right now, I physically own a sealed copy of Revenge of Shinobi. Oh, I don't know what version it is. So, but when I play it at home now, if I don't play it on a compilation disc, I'm playing it on the Sega CD version. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's really crazy. Like, you know, games have always had revisions throughout the years, but man, this game's gone through a lot of changes. <laughs> this was naughty, naughty, yeah. naughty. Um, so Batman was replaced by some like man bat beast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Rambo, if I'm not mistaken, they just literally took off his hair, so he was bald. Uh, the Godzilla. I believe they kept in some sense, but he was mechanized underneath. Yeah, they did something with the um, the art, but yeah, so there's still a giant dinosaur creature you have to fight, but it doesn't quite resemble the, the thing they changed. The they changed something yeah, they to, changed too, enough, so yeah. Toho wouldn't sue them to, to death. Fair enough, good call, good call. <laughs> uh, Terminator, I can't remember how they were changed, but yeah, it's, but it's if you didn't, if you don't get an opportunity to play one of the earlier builds that had the non-licensed characters in it, it's not really that big of a deal. If you think about it, you want to get a little more obscure and go back to something not as blatant in the original Shinobi. 
uh, especially the second second stage of round one. So you have so the first stage is you're outside, and then the second stage is like there's yellow brick, kind of top it's right to the top of the screen with Marilyn Monroe posters on it. So there were there were certain ninjas that were on the walls. And they oh, were yeah, like blue and pink and whatever, yeah. but I knew what they were. <laughs> Nazi, Nazi Sega. <laughs> but despite all the multiple changes in terms of some uh, loose copyright ideas, uh, the game itself is still held up throughout the years. And I do remember, it, it seems like a little thing at the time, that now, to think about it, but at the time, so in Shinobi you had shurikens, right? And you could select, you know, I always select unlimited ones. But... I noticed the moment when you jump, at the height of your jump, if you press the shuriken button, you do a cartwheel, and then all these row shurikens would come yeah, spinning like out. Eight, eight or, yeah, like eight or so shurikens come out at once. And at the time, I don't know why, like, maybe I was, you know, I was 14 when I was playing it, and, you know, that, that just, I love that. <laughs> just constantly, that's why I wanted to limit shurikens, not because the cheat and get through the game easier, but just because I always wanted to do that jump and see that spiral of shurikens come out and hit everyone. I, I vaguely, and I'm really hoping I'm not, I'm not like associating this memory with a different Shinobi game, but there was a level in a forest with like bamboo shoots. That's actually the third one. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Which so is, we'll be talking about in the future. We'll be talking about that. So I'll bring up that story later. But yeah, Sega, you know, a uh, a crusader for fair use. But you know that that's that's part of the reason that's part of the reason we love the golden age of video games is because it was the wild west. Yeah. Sega gets away with ripping off you know um, I guess Michael Jackson songs from Sonic Three even though he apparently like wrote stuff but that music didn't sound like original work as much as it did original work of his that was on another album. You know, that, Golden Axe with the Conan the Barbarian and First Blood uh, samples, obviously this, they went completely overboard. I'm fine with it. Yep. I'm fine with it. And it was just, it was fun. It was, exactly, that's actually, that's a good way of saying it, because it was fun. It wasn't uh, done to purposely, like, we're going to, we're going to, there wasn't like just some meeting in some boardroom where all the guys from Sega Japan got together and says, here's what we're going to do. We're gonna screw over you know these movie studios and steal these characters. No, it was just fun. It was it was like uh, Konami when they made Contra. Obviously, it was there was homage to the film Aliens in there. And, uh, you know, it was stuff like that. It was and, and not just Aliens. I'm feeling another influence from Contra. I, he's gonna you're this is gonna you're gonna slap me for this, but I never I never put the alien thing at the front. I always put like the I always put like the commando aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So so basically. When I looked at it, it was always Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. Those were the guys, yeah. and I think even some of the artwork made a, made a suggestion to that. I'm so sorry for cutting you off. As soon as you know, I'm like, what do you mean, Contra? No, it's about the dudes! <laughs> but you're right, Contra, Contra, and, and uh, with Konami, um, they weren't limited to Contra. Mm -hmm. You did have Snatcher in the in the club scene, yep. different ver um the original version wasn't Konami characters, but when it came to Sega CD, it was. Yeah, it was. It was Rocket Raccoon, uh, Dracula from Castlevania, the guys from Contra, and uh, a few others. Whereas before, it was the it was Xenomorph, the Xenomorph from Alien <laughs> and a bunch of others. So, but yeah, but that's it's like, it was a bit of the Wild West, but it was nothing vindictive. It was a lot of fun, and that's I think this still is probably the best way to explain uh, to describe Revenge of Shinobi if someone hasn't played it yet. It's still just an absolute fun game. Hey, oh, yeah. it's not easy. It's Ooh. not easy. That whole like uh, old school Ooh. difficulty that, that believe me, uh, there's no. Um, I always make fun of people when I, when I talk about it online when I'm playing like the original Donkey Kong. And I say, hey, there's no hand holding, no tutorial mode. They just kind of go, here you go, right into the the crocodile pit, <laughs> and that's what this game is. So if we're used to games that kind of leave you by the hand and go, oh, don't worry, Johnny, it's going to be okay, son. You're going to be fine. We'll we'll get through this together. Don't worry. There's multiple checkpoints. That ain't happened in this game. It's <laughs> so, not. It's so, not. But it's still like it's it's a it's it's a kind of game that you know uh, you can hone your skills on. You know, it's about fast reflexes, uh, pattern recognition. Oh man, some of those jumps like in the waterfall stage and stuff, you know, but stuff it, like but that. But it, it was rewarding. You yes. always wanted to get to the next stage. You yeah. always wanted to hear the next, you know, the next piece of music yeah. and see the next set of enemies. Another thing that makes me think about when we're talking about this notion of putting those characters into Revenge of Shinobi, another reason why it was significant back in the day was that, you know, now with video games, 
it's gone beyond a saturation point in terms of product placement and officially licensed mm -hmm. cars, clothing, sneakers, like it just goes on forever. Mm -hmm. Music just keeps on going. But back then, you knew there was next to nothing from the real world. And so I don't know about you, but for myself, this moment came a decade after this came out. But when I was playing Shenmue and I was playing the Japanese version of it, and I'm like, oh wow, it's, it's, it's actually a can of Coke. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a Coke vending machine. And then the American version came out and then we're, we're back to, you know, like fake stuff. So in that period, that period of time, especially in the 16-bit era where homages, liberal homages would appear in games, I, I lived for that. Yes. That was the best. And Revenge of Shinobi was one of the best examples of it because it was just like, hey, Rambo, <laughs> Batman, Spider-Man, we're going different universes now, Godzilla, Terminator, different timelines. I, was, I just loved it because it... It made the video game, oh, man, Revenge of Shinobi, because of those aspects, it made the game, the, it was like world building that we mm -hmm. weren't even aware of, and, and the concept of world building is, there's so much out there. And playing through a side-scrolling game that just gets you in the mindset there's so much out there, makes you want to play more, makes you want to explore more and see what can you find. So. You know, like we talk about Revenge of Shinobi, we talk about the lineage of Shinobi, that it came from a great game, the great arcade game Shinobi. It had a fantastic follow up on the Genesis Shinobi 3. Yep. It had a, uh, two fantastic follow ups on one on Genesis, one on the arcade Shadow Dancer. Um, the Shinobi that showed up, the, the digitized Shinobi yeah. that showed up uh, Shinobi Legions or, on, or uh, Shin Shinobi is Shin Shinobi, yeah, Shinobi. Yeah. Shin Shinobi Legions. We'll yeah. just give it the total <laughs> name. Uh, I think Vic Toika mm -hmm. uh, was the, the distributor yep. here. And then, you know, I went into the PlayStation 2 Shinobi games. That's right, yeah. Those which were uh, they're successful, and, and, and again, they kept the, the brutal difficulty. Mm -hmm. And the Nightshade. So they, the Nightshade and, spinoff. And you know what? I was just about to say, it's a shame we haven't had a, um, like Shinobi has kind of faded away, but there was, a, there was a 3DS Shinobi, you know, that was a few years ago now, but... Mm -hmm. I um, I can only hope like Sega put out something recently where they're asking fans like, hey, what new? Because now that Sonic Mania has kind of reinvigorated them, going, hey, hey, like there's money to be made here, so they're asking the fans, you know, what series would you like to be brought back? And you know, obviously the, you know, the Panzer Dragoons, the Jet Set radios, and all that they come up to them. But I would uh, I would love to see a traditional 2D hand drawn Shinobi. That, that'd be my uh, I think that'd be my jam. I, I'll, I'll see you that, and I'll, and I'll add to it that I do believe there also should be like, and especially if they just keep the games as is, there's no real need to update them. You can definitely do, um, you can definitely do Revenge of Shinobi, Shinobi 3, Shadow Dancer mm -hmm. on it as well, and hey, throw us, throw us an arcade port of the first one as well. Yes, absolutely. And just give that, just, it's so much, so much great stuff. Give us, what we need is we need a Shinobi, there you go, Sega. Next year for the 30th anniversary of Revenge of Shinobi, let's let's get a 30th anniversary compilation going with Revenge of Shinobi and the other games I mentioned. I think that would be awesome. Yeah. I would buy that. <laughs> I would buy that. So in the meantime, if you want to play Revenge of Shinobi, obviously there's multiple ways. Um, it's on again every compilation disc as Sega releases a tons of them. I think there's one that came out just even a few months ago. So there's definitely tons of ways to play it. I, I uh, would I would recommend trying to find the different. If you oh, find yeah. The, yeah find the game and like it, try to find different. Different versions, versions of yeah. it on, on emulators. Exactly, because yeah, there's several different versions, and uh, I'm gonna uh, literally go home and, and be a complete snob and play the Sega CD version because, oh, well, uh, yeah, because that's the only way I play it now. Oh, uh, because you like? Because I want I want to play that, and when I'm done, I will play Streets of Rage. Yeah. After that, it just, you know, it just keeps on going <laughs> yeah. back and back. But uh, but guys, yeah. So there we go. Um, again, yeah, as we're curating and talking about games we love. And some games people might not be familiar with, as this is, I would say, an obscure game, but maybe a game that's not as well known as other Shinobis. Definitely worth to go back and play it and kind of get an idea of the first, um, you know, made for console version of Shinobi. Absolutely. Yeah, that is a great point. And everything that followed, and we failed to mention the, the GG Shinobi games, mm -hmm. the Game Gear Shinobi games yep. as well. Can't comment on them. I wasn't a, I, I wasn't a Game Gear kid. I, I think I. I'm not even sure if I played a Game Gear game at this point. I should probably get on that. <laughs> but great series. Uh, you're absolutely right. This is part of the Chargeback Forward curated collection, especially for players that are uh, interested in a challenge. Some Dark Souls uh, 
frustration maybe I'm not, I'm not sure how comparable that would be but uh, games like this there's a game that I, I would love to talk with you about sometime and we don't have a sound we don't have a soundtrack for it as of yet so we'll have to do it on a week where we talk about mm-hmm. something else but I'd love to talk about last battle oh there you go yeah because when I think of Ryan Fenton Shinobi I cannot help but think of Last Battle, yeah. just because of its proximity yeah. to the release. Exactly, yeah. They are released a few months away from each other, essentially, so. So as you can tell, uh, we are forever in love with the Golden Age of video games. Uh, I, I think at some point we will talk about something that's uh, past the uh, past the 90s? Yes, <laughs> eventually. At <laughs> some point, we, there, there's a couple of them there. Yeah. If, you're, if, if, you are, if you are high-ranking members of the Chargeback Army, if you are loyal soldiers of the Chargeback Army, I'm pretty sure there are a few titles popping around in your head right now that you can rest assured we will be talking about in the future. So uh, I, I think uh, I think that's it. That's all yep. we can say. I mean, you, you can we're beating a dead horse at this time. Revenge of Shinobi recommended. Recommended. That's that's it. That's all I got. Go. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm just gonna like fill space until I decide I want to cut this. <laughs> Anyways, guys and girls. <laughs> It was fantastic sharing this discussion with you on the great classic, The Revenge of Shinobi. We look forward to seeing you very soon for another fun discussion and another stroll down memory lane with a shuriken. Check, check, check. Oh. 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 Well, sorry, you can buy another one. Yeah. <laughs>